Hi, and welcome to this week's edition of Las Vegas Advisors Weekly Update with Anthony and Andrew. Today is Wednesday, March 2nd, 2022, marching into this new month. How are we doing, Anthony? Doing good. Good. It's 70 degrees out, it's, uh, 75. It's beautiful. I know. The weather is amazing here in Vegas, and you can see a little snow on the top of the mountain. Too. Yeah, right. It's uh, Well, we're, we're higher than usual right now. We're in the high 70s. And I think in two days, we're back down into the low 60s again. So, you right. know, it moves around in the desert, that's for sure. Just in time for the weekend. Going to be a fun weekend uh, in Vegas. Uh, big news in real estate this week, though. Yeah, another new project. Yeah, like a massive project, like a $4 billion project. Right. This one, uh, this is called the All Net Resort and Arena. Okay. And this is something that's been on the books for since 2013. Okay. And it was first proposed way back then by a former UNLV and NBA basketball player named uh, Jackie Robinson, hence all net basketball. Okay. Right? Get it? All right. And it's a gigantic complex on the north side of the Strip. And we've written about it several times in LVA and have to admit we labeled it a pipe dream. You know, we just never thought it was going to happen because it had a whole bunch of starts and stops, starts and stops. <clears throat> and they actually broke ground for a short period of time in 2017. Okay. And then the funding couldn't come through. And it's Five just- Five years ago. Yeah, it just seemed too, like too much. Okay. It just wasn't gonna happen. You know, we're talking, what is it? Two hotels, an arena, a theater, probably- Convention a, center maybe? Uh, some small convention, you yeah. know, a convention center type thing because mm -hmm. it's near there. Um, a, a casino, I'm sure. Oh yeah. And I mean, it's just like, how's this gonna happen? And this guy, just kept pushing and pushing and pushing. And now all of a sudden there's a, um, a Texas-based uh, uh, venture capital fund yeah. that says they're gonna put up the $4.2 billion wow. to, uh, to make this thing happen. And they're, they're supposed to break ground on it um, in the summer. And it's interesting, when this thing started, when it was first proposed, and it was considered a pipe dream back then, the number was 1.3 billion. So it's moved from 1.3 billion to 4.2. Wow. In about in about a decade's time. You've got to think that the reason this company came in is because of what's going on in the north end of the strip right now. Yeah, well, I mean, this goes to show you also like a lesson in like tenacity and like that saying like dream so big that your friends will think you're crazy or that, you know, maybe Anthony Curtis will say you are, you're a pipe dream. Well, we've, <laughs> you know, we've seen a lot of these things come and go. We've seen yeah. a lot of these pronouncements and they don't work, especially once they get shot down once or twice. Yeah. But, you know, this, you know, look at what's going on in the north side of the strip. Yeah. You know, you always had win and encore. You know, now we're talking about, and you had Sahara down the road. Now we're talking about Fountain Blue opening up. Resorts World just opened up there. Now we're talking about this because this is going to be built on the land where um, Wet n' Wild Water Park used to be. Okay. And that's pretty much between the big Fountain Blue building and Sahara. I mean, this is a massive development. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be big if it, if it comes through. Yeah. All right. Well, we're rooting for you, Jackie Robinson. All right, well, it looks like one up and one down. So Terribles and Gene will not reopen, correct? Apparently not. When you're coming in from California and across the border into Nevada, the first cluster of casinos you run into is in a little town called Prim. Right. And, uh, you know, you've got the roller coaster there, and you've uh -huh. got uh, three casinos. And uh, next, as, as you go farther down, you run into Gene. Yes. And Gene is where Terribles was. Mm -hmm. And for a long time, there were two casinos there. Uh, Terribles was one of them, and the other one was Nevada Landing. Okay. Now, Nevada, Nevada Landing closed more than a decade ago, but Terribles, Terribles has been there, and a lot of people used to stop there. I assume you probably did. Oh, yeah, many times because they had a tiny craps table, and they also uh, have a giant uh, gas station that they promote. It's like right. the biggest gas station, I think, uh, you know, as you're pulling in. Yeah, it's, it's, it's always been like, uh, you know, one of your first chances or last chances. You know, mm -hmm. coming into town, you want to get started before you hit Vegas or on the way out, you go, okay, let me give it one more shot, right? Yeah, exactly. That, that sort of thing. So, you know, I used to like to go out there. You know, we'd go out and just fool around, have a few beers, you know, whatever, play a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's going to be turned into some kind of a big merchandising something or another, a distribution center, and that's it. No more casinos. But there is something to do out there. You know, this is where the location, if you go about seven miles west mm -hmm. into a little city called Good Springs, and it's all marked, you can see, you know, the road to Good Springs, you run into the Pioneer Saloon. Okay. Which is one of the oldest bars in Nevada. How old is it? I, more than 100 years, I do believe. Oh, wow. And, I mean, this thing's got... All kinds of history associated with it. You know, this is supposedly, not supposedly, I guess it's pretty well, you know, known that Clark Gable sat there for apparently days on end when his wife at the time, Carol Lombard's plane crashed in the Nevada mountains. Wow. And so she ended up dying in that crash. But as Gable waited for news, he sat in the Pioneer Saloon. 
And there's when you go there, there's notices that talk about that. Well, you know, there's really no signage from the road that would indicate that there's a Pioneer Saloon there. No, but once you, you know, you'll see the road to Good Springs. Okay. And it's, you know, it heads, it heads west. And it's like I say, it's about a seven mile drive. It's a little bit of a biker bar. Okay. A lot of bikers go there, but they're friendly bikers. You know, I mean, all the cool. times I've been there, it's, uh, they've got machines. Video poker? Uh, yeah, video okay. poker machines. And actually, there was another, you know, another bit of trivia. Max Rubin, who oh. wrote the book Comp City for us, was in a movie that was shot out there called Texas Payback. Okay. And it was shot in the saloon, and Max Rubin gets shot. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, so uh, Texas... Texas payback. Texas payback. Right. Okay. And so it's fun though. I'm telling you, the pioneer. So you you can't stop anymore at the at the casino because it never opened and it's not going to. But you know, maybe take a little side side trip, you know, yeah. over to Pioneer Saloon. I do when I have time. If I'm coming back from LA, I'm close to Vegas and I have time, I pull off and I go get a beer. All right. So you so you pull off. You'll go uh, check out the saloon and uh, go check out a, a little piece of history. Yeah. It's again one of the oldest bars in Nevada. Who wants to buy a brothel? Uh, we saw this one. It's a 10,000 square foot love ranch. is on the market for $1.2 million. The brothel features 15 master suites, 2,500 square foot bar, two new kitchens, two mobile homes, a limo, an advertising, and an advertising truck. Interested parties should bring cash. No offers with mortgage contingencies will be considered. So there you have it. Somebody needs $1.2 million. You know, I don't know. It's, uh, it might be fun to own a brothel. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you'd have to run the business or you just live there or what you do, but uh, I don't know, kind of a crazy one. It's a crazy one. So if you have $1.2 million and you're looking to buy a brothel or just, you know, some sort of a uh, piece of real estate. Piece of something. A piece of something. Yeah, you're looking to buy a piece of something for $1.2 million. But apparently this is real. Yeah. You know, I think this was owned by uh, Dennis Hoff. He was the most famous brothel master in Nevada. Oh, Di yeah, he had the Bunny Ranch TV show. Mm -hmm. he died a exactly. He died a couple of years ago, and they're probably, you know, liquidating his estate. And in entertainment news, this one I find really interesting. Uh, Dion Warwick is uh, coming back to Vegas with a new type of residency. Yeah, it's a different kind of residency because it's not in a casino. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Dionne Warwick has been around since the 60s. Right. You know, so she's very well known. She's, uh, she's played in the casinos before. And um, she's going to do this residency starting March 24th at a place called the Sterling Club, which is in the Turnberry Place Towers. Uh, it's a condominium um, complex uh, located kind of adjacent to the convention center. So it's on the east side of the Strip. It's going to be... Interesting because it's going to be a very uh, intimate setting, yeah. you know, inside this club. Uh, and they did something like this uh, a few years ago when Pia Zadora did a residency at Piero's restaurant. Oh, yeah. And it was a very, you know, cool vibe. Um, it, it was fun. I went to see it. She was very relaxed, sang a bunch of songs, told a bunch of stories. I'm sure Dionne Warwick will do the same thing. Right. Um, and it's also the kind of thing that stars come to, you know, on their off nights or after their shows or whatever. They come and, and sit in on the show. So, you know, this is going to be it's going to be pretty cool. They're advertising it as eighty nine to one hundred and ninety nine dollars for tickets. Okay. Do we know how many seats? Don't know. I mean, it's like I say, it's going to be a small venue. OK. But, uh, you know, you're going to want to have to call ahead on this. And I think it's, it'd probably be worth doing. OK. Now, if the show is really successful, do the residents get like a discount on their HOA? <laughs> I don't I don't know. Maybe I doubt it. You know, okay. knowing how these places operate. Yeah. But you know what? Years ago, uh, Dionne Warwick used to hang out at the at Cleopatra's Barge mm -hmm. at, uh, at Caesar's Palace. And when I first came to town, I used to run around with a guy mm -hmm. and we'd go to these clubs and we went to the barge. And, and one day he saw Dionne Warwick sitting there by herself. So he went up and asked her to dance. Uh -huh. All right. Now, he was about we were in our 20s back then. And she was she would have been probably mid to late 40s. Yeah. 81 and, now. She's 81 right. years old now. And she, uh, I think she danced with him. Nice. And uh, then he went back and tried for seconds, and she was like, no, you know, no, Sonny. Don't you get know, greedy. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't think so. And it was the way she did it. She was, like, really cool. Yeah. But she's kind of like, this ain't going to happen. So, <laughs> you know, don't worry about it. But, uh, you know, I think that this will be something fun. I will I will absolutely go to see this. We will, oh, yeah. We will review absolutely. this. Absolutely. I love the song uh, Walk On By, and uh, Dionne Warwick's one of the great, you know, oh, so old singers of all time do you know the way to sterling club right that's yeah. a, so that's it if you do you can go see dion warwick okay and in this week's jackpot of the week this one is really fun this is how it's supposed to happen okay we got this jackpot from steve t 
T. Hey guys, I hit this beauty at the Park MGM Sports Bar, Bet MGM, on my first press. I put $100 in, and I hit a Royal Flush Hearts. I couldn't believe it. I sat down, and I only played to get a free Corona. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> and it was at first press. No, yeah. that's interesting. Was that uh, olive oil? What, uh, <laughs> not sure. First press, first play, first spin, whatever. Yeah. Um, okay, so what we got here, we got 965 bonus poker game. Okay. Which is uh, not too bad. 97.81% return with perfect play, which is about par for the course for MGM property. Um, what's interesting about this is that uh, he was playing for comps. Yeah. And, you know, and, and people go, well, you know, why would you do that, you know, instead of just buying a beer? And this is something we've talked about in the past and, you know, we'll continue to, to advocate. A lot of people who live here, who understand the game, will do that. They'll put in some money and they'll play to get their beers. And here's the way it works. You have to look at the casino edge on that. Mm -hmm. It's a little over 2%, but let's be generous and let's give him 3% on okay. this. So if he's playing $5, 3%, that's 15 cents. So for one spin or one press, as he puts it, for one spin of the wheel, he's giving up 15 cents. Okay. He could literally play $100 through, which would be 20 spins, and he's giving up $3. Okay. That's it. $3 for a beer that probably costs 9 or 10 but how practical is that in practical play? That's you know, it's you extremely have it's extremely practical okay. because you know over time, sure, you can end up with a fifty dollar Heineken, right? Uh -huh. But you could also end up with a four thousand dollar Heineken your way, you know. <laughs> and what right. you have to look at yeah. is the cost of each play, the expected value of each play. That is, what is the casino's rightful win on each play or each play accumulated? Mm -hmm. And the only way you can do that is looking at the casino edge. And they're only entitled, essentially, over time, to their edge times the amount wagered. Mm -hmm. So for $5, they're only entitled to $0.15 cents over time. Right. So it is, even though there's a, there's a lot of variance and a whole bunch of things can happen in between, over time, he's going to be paying $0.15 cents on every push or every press, as he says, or every spin. All right, so let's say, even he, let's say he puts 300 through. If he puts 300 through, that's nine dollars. He's probably at a break-even point at this, you know, at this okay. stage. And if he drinks a second beer, oh my goodness! Yeah, well, you if know? you get two beers out of it, then yeah. all the better. But yeah. that's the way you play it. You know, mm -hmm. when people say to us, "Why were you guys playing six-five bonus poker?" Well, we were playing it for comps. Yeah. And and the same sort of logic applies. You know, you take the percentage that the casino is entitled to or the bar is entitled to, and that's what you are over time paying for your drinks. And that's what happened here. I think it's a great play. All right, and that's it for this week. Uh, keep sending us your jackpots. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and remember, if you want to know when each episode is published, hit the bell button next to the subscribe. That way, the second we publish, you'll be notified on your uh, smart device.